You might not be able to read that well, but I'll read it for you. Let's turn to Romans 8, verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Now, Today is basically an introduction for something that we plan to do in the future, maybe this summer or something, or spring or whatever, but we plan to do a whole conference on the subject of sonship and inheritance. I'd like to take us to another verse. It's a little further in Romans 8, and I'm going to have to jump down here. I've move on. Verse 17, and if we are children, whoops, and if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, so that if we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the coming glory to be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of, God, of, of creation waits for the manifestations of the sons of God. The earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, creation was eagerly awaiting the manifestation of Jesus, who is the Son of God. And when we become Christians, we become sons of God, the Bible says. And so the world is waiting for us to come with the same power as Jesus came. And that's what we have. We have an inheritance. And these are the things we're going to be talking about. We have an inheritance to move in everything that Jesus had. He said, greater things you will do than these. And we haven't grasped that. That's obvious. There's some people that you feel around the world that you look at their ministries, you feel, wow, like Heidi Baker, Catherine Kuhlman, and you see that they have grasped something. Um, what I'm going to be teaching on has been basically taught, um, was taught at the time of Catherine Kuhlman. There was a theologian an elderly theologian that was going around at the time, and he was teaching this foundational theology of sonship. And as he was teaching this, a number of these ministers grasped the theology behind sonship, and they started moving in with the inheritance of a son. Because the Bible says, if we are children, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. If we are children, then we have an inheritance. And so when they grasped this, now it's not just this, it's the whole theology and teaching that went with sonship. When they grasped this, they started moving like the Son of God. Because he calls us to do things that, greater things than he did. And that's when the healing ministries just took off. And then apparently, um, this fellow died. And when he died, the teaching died with it. Because Catherine Kuhlman wasn't teaching this. She was moving in it. Now, there are teachers and there are movers. You follow me? And she was moving in it naturally. She grasped it. She understood it. And she believed it. And she moved in it. And she started seeing beautiful, powerful things. And a lot of the ministers at that time were seeing Powerful healings, Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, and they were moving in this theology. <laughs> and then the theology died, and then we go back to very little healings and power and miracles. We get one person healed every now and then. And so sonship is a real, real key. Um, we can either move as a son or a slave. So we've not received a spirit of bondage whereby to fear again. We're no longer slaves whereby, or in bondage. But we've, we've received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Oh, we can move as sons. We can be slaves or sons. 
And what we're going to be doing in this conference, especially when I come back, we're going to have a session where we will be able to evaluate are we truly sons or are we slaves or where do we situate ourselves. Now, each one of us has a part of sonship in us because we have been saved. But our natural tendency is going back to what we understand. And so many of us have reverted back to slavery <laughs> in many areas. And that's why we're not free. And that's why we're not moving in the full power that we have. And uh, I'm not just saying this for me. Anybody that I've managed to, to, to share this with, and many churches that I've been to where I've shared this, the whole church or many members of the church have started moving in, a, in, a, in an upper level of the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, this is not just for me. And it's not just for certain ministers. This is for the church at large. He calls us to be sons of God. We are sons of God and we have an inheritance. And this is what Paul is telling us. We have an inheritance. If we are children, then we are heirs, joint heirs with Christ. I have a greater thing that God has called me to do than being a dishwasher. Do you follow me? You don't have to be and live the mundane. And I really believe that. And so these are the things that we're going to be talking about. And tonight we're going to give you a just a taste. Even this morning a little taste. But tonight we're going to go into one of the teachings. And it's going to blow you away. Boy, I've been a Christian and I didn't know this. <laughs> I remember when Cobus Van Rensburg came to Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship and shared for two sessions on this material. Well, he, he shared for a whole week, but there was two of the sessions where he really took time to share about this foundational theology of sonship. And he said, this is what I move in. He came from South Africa and he's a pastor of a church where people line up. People line up for hours and hours and hours before the service starts. Thousands, lines of thousands of people for miles long lining up to go to church. And you know the old saying that a pastor doesn't have power in his own, you know, and his, the, the prophet is uh, whatever, you know, in his own home. Well, and they apply that to pastors and... and, and and we can live that because people get to know you. Well, that theology goes beyond that. I'm telling you, I want you to know that. It goes way beyond that. You're not restricted to that anymore. You're a son of God regardless. And certainly, um, th th this man, has, he came over with some articles, newspaper articles, big, 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 you know, spreads. And uh, in these spreads, there were pictures and, and, the, and they had... The journalist had done an article on 70 major miracles, paralytics. Most of them were paralytics that got up out of their chairs, just got up and walked. And they did a, two, a, a big two-page spread in the, in the newspaper. And they went and, and, and visited each one of these paralytics just to make sure that they were really healed. This is no kind of healing thing. And... Um, and afterwards, they did this two-page spread. They're in a space of two weeks, up to, I think it was something like 70 paralytics got up out of their chairs in this church. That's why they line up for hours to get there. <laughs> and he's teaching his people, and the people are moving in this. And he came over to Toronto, and he said, listen here. The foundational theology that was moving behind Catherine Kuhlman and Smith Wigglesworth, I went and I found it. And he said, I'm going to give it to you now in the next 45 minutes to so open your ears. And I said, okay, I'll open. <laughs> this is worth it. And I listened to it and I realized that most of the, what I had already understood came out of that. But he was like giving a theology to it. Making it so solid it became unshakable in my life. And then from that point on I started seeing healings going up dramatically. On one evening and two days at Mario Mascot's church, we saw something like 70 healings. And Mario called me and he said, I've never, ever seen any, ever, any time so many healing miracles in my services. And that have stuck. 
and the people come back and say that we have changed. There was a lady who had cancer in the throat, a big ball of cancer in her throat. And you could see it. And, and she couldn't speak. She would speak like this. And they had operated on the cancer. It had gone and now it had come back. And there it was. And I remember just praying for her and we saw it just disappear in front of our eyes. <laughs> this is not in Africa. This is here, you know, just down the road. I had a Baptist fellow come out to one of my services in, uh, in uh, Nova Scotia. And by the way, any of the stories that I tell you, anything that you've seen from the beginning to the end, you want to, you have a bit of difficulty believing, don't worry, Thomas did, that happens. You want to check up on it, you can. I'll let you put your hands in my, your fingers in my hands. You're allowed to do that. You were told you're not, you are. Jesus permitted Thomas to do it. But anyway, if you need it, I have in my Palm Pilot, which is in my briefcase, wherever my briefcase is, I have all the addresses of anybody that, I, that you hear the story about or any situation that you hear. I was involved with a church and I can give you the pastor's name. Anyway, this Baptist pastor, this Baptist pastor comes into a service in Nova Scotia, um, at Wolfville, Nova Scotia, and he had a case of skin eating, devouring disease, and he was to die. I don't know if you've heard of the skin, you know, flesh eating. Well, it was going up his legs, and his legs were all swollen. He was on crutches, and he had lesions in his face also. And they said when it touched his private parts, he was going to die. And so he was very close to death at that point, and he came in, and he came up to the front, and he asked for prayer. And he went out under the power of the Holy Spirit. He's never been in a, in a service like that. He, he didn't believe in that. In his congregation, they, they preach against it. He's a diehard conservative Baptist. And he went under the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he got up, threw his crutches on his shoulder, said, I don't need this anymore. Went to see the doctor the next day. And the doctor ran blood tests and said there was not one, not one particle of skin-eating disease in his whole body left. And that very same day, he went out to the sports, the gym, and played gym with his, uh, played basketball with his friends. And he believes in God again. <laughs> we need that. And these are the kinds of things I've been seeing since then. Now, I've always been preaching out on the streets in dangerous situations, but now I'm seeing a lot of power coming with, with it. And even in my own congregation, Ben fell off the edge of, uh, close to the bridge of Quebec, he fell off the edge, he got a powerful testimony of how God saved him, fell off the edge, of, very close to the bridge of, of Quebec, uh, La Falaise, like a cliff, and he, and he got stuck in the mud, <laughs> which, you know, anyway, and, uh, and the water was coming up, and he nearly died there, but he broke his basin, and there was a separation of uh, several centimeters and unless it's three or four centimeters they don't operate and so he had this constant pain and he couldn't sit down and he needed to sit down to go take his trucking lessons and so we prayed and it's gone completely immediately and he can sit down now for hours and hours see we need we need this <laughs> let's go okay <laughs> yeah, we got a little bit of work to do to break down some theology and rebuild some theology. If you permit me to do it, if you don't, kick me out right away. <laughs> but we, we have to catch what these people have caught, and obviously haven't caught it. But the main key is that sons have a relationship with a father. You'll always hear me this, repeat this. I'll be coming back to this even when I come back in the, in the summer. Sons have a relationship with the father. Secondly, they have an inheritance. The two main things that differentiate them between slaves. In the Old Testament, we were slaves to the law, and we had a master. We had a relationship with a master, and we didn't have an inheritance. We have a salary. So when you work for a salary, you work really hard and get very little. 
You follow me? So if you try to earn your salary, you get a little. And that's why the church has been getting a little. They try to earn the healings. They pray for them. They fast for them. And so they get a little now and then. A son doesn't do anything to earn his inheritance. He gets it freely. So he just gets it by birthright. So he doesn't... And that's why some of these people were in sin and were still moving under the power of God. Because they had understood the keys. He, the guy had taught the keys so well, the theology so well, that they didn't try to earn it. And many of them, some of them, not many of them, some of them went into a lifestyle of sin and were still moving under the power of the Holy Spirit, like William Branham and a number of others. And that's because they had understood that your inheritance doesn't come by earning it. Now, we will explain a lot of things. So what do we do? do does that permit us to sin? No, it doesn't permit us to sin. If you sin and go off like that, you're like the prodigal son. He didn't earn his inheritance, did he? He took his inheritance, went off into sin, and he had it for a while, didn't he? But what happens if you go off into sin with your inheritance? You waste it. And then eventually you run out. And this is what happened to all of these men, too. They run out. <laughs> but we'll be talking about these principles. If you separate yourself from the vine, then obviously you will wither. And that's what it means. The fruit withers. But it doesn't wither right away. And the actual discipline is that you're you, lose, you lose your inheritance. You start losing it. But in the first place, you can't earn it. This is the first principle we have to understand. You can't earn inheritance. And her inheritance is received by birthright. And so we're going to have to settle a theology behind this. I can share this with you, but we have to really settle it in your hearts so that you see it scripturally. It's one thing to share it and just say, yeah, yeah, right, fine, Bob. You, but we need to hear it. We need to, we need to see it in Scripture. And so these are the kinds of things we'll be talking about. Where is this scripturally? That we don't have to earn it. And, um, but you see, a son gets it by birthright. He has an inheritance and he has a relationship with the father. The primary thing is a relationship with the father. You need a relationship with the father first before you get your inheritance. And it's not a condition to get it. It's just part of the package. When you're a son, you have a father. And so we start, we need to have a relationship with the fathers to grasp our inheritance. And one of the reasons many people don't grasp their, their inheritance is they don't have a relationship with the father. Now it says here, what we were reading, I'm just going to go back to it. Oh, we can take Galatians 4, 3. There's another verse which talks about this. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So we were redeemed from the law, and we have received adoption, you see. When you come out from under the law, you're no longer under bondage or slavery, and you become a son of God. And when you become a son of God, The Holy Spirit sends His Spirit into your heart and it cries, Abba, Father. This generally happens in salvation, by the way. Well, it didn't happen to me. That's what I hear some people say. <laughs> but that's what happens in salvation. The Holy Spirit convicts you. The Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're now a son or a child of God. That happens at salvation. The Holy Spirit comes into your heart and says, you're now a child of God, by the way. That's what happens. You are adopted into the kingdom of God. You're adopted into the family of God. And the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're His child. And then the next thing that happens is this urge. You might not remember this, but it comes there's, there's something in us that wants to cry out, Father. For some people, it actually takes place. And for some people, it's just too much. They don't, they can't, it just doesn't come out of them. You see, Jesus brought in a whole new thing when he came. He started teaching about Father, a relationship with a Father. He started teaching, when you pray, this is how you should pray. The disciples came to him and said, teach us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, 
Say, Our Father. In that prayer, there's nothing much that differentiates us, that makes a difference between the New Testament prayer and the Old Testament prayer. It's virtually the same apart from that introduction. Our Father. He taught them to say, Our Father. And that was a completely new revelation because in the Old Testament, they were praying, Lord. They had a master. They were slaves. And so what came out of their mouths was Lord. But in the New Testament, Jesus taught them to pray. And He's taught you to pray. And He's told you, when you pray, say, Our Father. And for some odd reason, we can't do it. Most of the prayers that I hear is, Lord. Most of you are praying, Lord. It's not New Testament biblical. I'm sorry. He taught us to pray our Father. And the Spirit of God in you cries out, Abba, Father. So why do I hear Lord? Oh, because He's the Lord. Yes, but listen. Jesus is Lord. I agree. But the Father is a Father now. <laughs> Do you think when Prince Charles goes in to see his mother, he gets down on his knees and says, Oh, my highness, your highness. Your, uh. <laughs> and then there's Prince Philip, the husband, and then he turns around to his father and says, My lord. No. He says, Mom, dad, father. That's what they say. Because he is a son. Now everybody else in the kingdom says Lord or Highness or whatever. Do you follow me? Once you are a son, the Spirit of God cries out in your heart, Abba, Father. So what happens is, in here, there's been a rebirth, right? Inside you, the Holy Spirit has operated rebirth, and you are adopted. So in here, something is crying out, Abba, Father. But when it comes out, it doesn't come out, Abba, Father. It actually comes out, Lord. Because you're scared stiff of them. And you're scared not to say, you want to be right and say the right thing in front of the Lord. That's because you're still slaves. Sorry. If you pray 80% of your prayer to the Father, Lord, I'm sorry, 80% slaves. 100% of my, my prayer to the Father is Father. When I talk to Jesus, I sometimes say Jesus, Lord, but when I talk to the Father, 100% of the time, Father. That's a revelation that stuck with me. Father. 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 Not Lord. He's my Father. And I don't have no doubts about it, and I'm not scared to say it, and He's not, oh, ooh, Bob, you're touching holy ground. We're going to zap you. <laughs> there's a lot in this I'm sorry there's a lot in this this is one of the ways you can gauge sonship how you pray are you saying our father or our lord are you saying daddy Woo. You see, the Spirit is born again. The Spirit is adopted inside. In you, there's a cry for Abba, Father. But what's coming out is not Abba, Father, and it should be. Because the Spirit is, being, is crying out, Abba, Father. And Jesus taught you to say, Father. So the two should come together sometime. And it's because we haven't really grasped it. We haven't grasped that we have a Father. We still are mixed up in that. Lord... The law. <laughs> and we're going to deal with all of these subjects. When I, I can't deal with them in two, speak, in two, minutes, in two uh, sessions. We have a full conference just on this. Everywhere we've done this conference, it just breaks apart. I'm, I guarantee you, it'll break apart.
I don't guarantee you because of what I'm, my faith in me or my ability. I guarantee you because the, the, the truth itself sets people free. And I've just seen it time upon time. I teach this and wham, the truth comes in and people are set free. Whoo, it's exciting. I get excited to teach this. I'd love to say it's my material. It's not. It's the Bible. <laughs> and people who've grasped the New Testament theology, this is New Testament theology, have grasped it in times past. They started moving with this. Heidi Baker, you want to know what is behind her? It's sonship. That's what's underlying her whole, the, everything that she has. She calls her father. She goes even further and says, Dada, Daddy. Always praise Daddy. She's a mess. You might think she's a mess and she might look like a mess most of the time. But my God, does she have the power of the Holy Spirit with her because she's a son of God. 6,000 churches she started in four years. 6,000 churches. How do you do that? Without going bananas, I mean, what do you do? And her, she'll tell you, it's very simple. Sonship. Huh? Right, you go, so what? That doesn't help me. Yes, it does. We need to, the reason we need to grasp it is we haven't grasped it. Our, we do not see the Father as a Father. We see Him as Lord. And many of the other things that you're going to come, have come in here, other, other speakers are going to come and bring different aspects of sonship in. I'm going to be dealing mainly with the inheritance and the theology behind sonship because we need a good, strong foundation. It's not just enough to have an experience. It's good to have the experience, but we want to have the theology behind it. And then we, we also need to understand, further than the relationship, there is a relationship with a father. But one of the greatest things that a son has is an inheritance. Do you follow me? There's an inheritance coming to you. And we need to grasp that. There's the relationship. And many of the people were coming in and speaking about the relationship. I will too. I'll take them a little different angle. And all these angles will help you to grasp that relationship. But the inheritance is something that we need to grasp if we want to make an impact. So these are, these are the things that we're going to be sharing about. Now, let's move on. I don't know where we're moving on to, but let's see. <laughs> Do you see that? I don't see this. Okay, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? Jesus constantly talking about the Father, a relationship with the Father, and he's telling them they have a heavenly Father who will care for them. For all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need all these things. Anything that you need, your heavenly Father will supply. One thing I started realizing, I can't get my whole inheritance right now. Everything right now. But you see, everything that I need right now, I have. Because I got work to do. And to do my work, I need this. <laughs> you follow me? There's a calling on my life. And I got to be able to do this. And I can't do this in this condition or this, with this illness or with this, with this financial situation. So I have everything I need to do what I'm called to do. The Father gave everything He needed to His Son. He needed to his son Jesus so that he could accomplish what he had to do on earth. Then again, Matthew 6, verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Not our Lord who is in heaven. That's the Old Testament. We are adopted sons of God. 
And the, and the Spirit cries, Abba, Father. I don't know what He's crying in your spirit, but the Spirit in me cries out, Abba, Father. So these are things that we need to grasp. That's the end. <laughs> there is no more. We now shut this down. Go home. No, no. <laughs> Don't mind me. I thought you, yes, you thought he was getting in your typical preacher. I am not. I learned how to preach on the streets, and there, I, have, I have no set pattern on what I'm doing. Even though I have a computer, I still don't have a clue what I'm doing with it, okay? I might look like I've got technology under my belt, but actually, it's way beyond my belt. <laughs> Father, we love you. Father, we love you. We bless you. How many of you feel the peace and the presence of the Holy Spirit right now? As we're it's just beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit here right now. Mm. <laughs> Father, we love you. Can I do a little bit of Holy Spirit ministry? Okay. Just a little? That's true, it's your anniversary. <laughs> we'll see. I only do what the Father tells me to do. <laughs> That's a good way out of anything, by the way. <laughs> it sounds spiritual, too. <laughs> I only do what the Father tells me to do. Everything I see the Father doing, I do. Did he tell you to do that? No, sorry. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on us. Thank you, Father. <laughs> okay, just let a little, a little wind come through, Father Flo. Blessing. Yes, Lord. Another, yeah, there was another one, Flo. Bless them. Thicken your presence. Yeah, right, right in this section especially, it's getting a little thicker right here. Just flow. Blessings. Another wave. Okay, those of you in this section here that are feeling like the weight and the glory of God, like it's like getting really heavy, you're feeling like drunk, you've, like you've taken about ten volumes or something. It's okay, you're allowed to. God has his own medication. And you're feeling just like the waves and the peace of the Holy Spirit and sometimes the wind. I just invite you to just come here, just right in this section. Any, anybody here that just feel like the peace of God, but that peace is getting heavier. It's like winds or just very thick. Just come, come immediately. Don't hesitate because I need helpers, please. Pity. Help. No. <laughs> Quick. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Please come forward, yeah. Flow. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Now, we see this out on street corners. It's wonderful to see this with non-Christians. When the power and the glory of God comes down on street corners, sometimes it looks like this. Not all the time, but sometimes it looks like that. And I've... Now what happens, that's the very same thing as what happened to the people that came to see Jesus, the, the, guard, the, the soldiers, they said, Jesus, you know, are you, are, are you Jesus? So where is Jesus of Nazareth? And they said, uh, and, he, and Jesus said, I'm he who, who you're looking for. And all the guards fell down backward. And very often on the streets to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit, not all the time, but now and then this happens where, I, where we see, uh, you know, I've seen whole crowds go out on the street corner under the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> and you notice we, 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 we barely touch, we don't, and if they don't go, we just don't do it because on the streets if you push somebody down, they'll punch you.
going to understand I learned most of my ministry on a street corner, so I'm just, just let God do it, be very gentle, and if he doesn't do it, don't mess around with it, right? <laughs> no, I, don't, I hate to see that when people are pushing. They don't need to do that. The more they push, the more they lose it. They think they're gaining more power. They lose it. God's taking his glory off, He's saying, if you need to do it by yourself, then I can go. <laughs> You don't need me, I'm gone. <laughs> oh, Father, Father, Father. We do that sometimes out of insecurity, right? Oh, Jesus. We won't go there right now. Anybody else, as I've been ministering, you felt the peace and the presence of God get thicker and thicker. Just raise your hand wherever you are. There's more of you than that. You're just chicken. <laughs> Or shy. Just raise your hands wherever. You just see the peace and the presence of God. Yeah. I want you to come. <laughs> if you don't want to come, you don't have to. You raise your hands. Thank you very much. If you don't want to come, feel free. But if you'd like to come, just come. Okay? We won't force anybody. <laughs>